Hello. This is going to be about creating a uh, virtual pet. Clearly, it's just going to be demo code. And we're going to, um, of course, continue um, the idea. It's going to be C++ at intro level. All right, here we have a virtual pet. We're going to ask the pet um, to listen, or play, feed into tricks. You enter a number here, or else we can quit. And this thing will proceed in some hidden loop, doing these things over and over again. Command and response, I guess you would call this. All right, so when consider a, a pet, or when any time you program, you lose your imagination. So our pet can play cards, magic tricks, um, busy, sleeping, eating. We have all these kind of choices. We have to use our imagination, of course. And notice a picture um, helps our imagination an awful lot. Good graphics. We're not using graphics in this program, however. But we are using our imagination. All right, so here we develop, or I develop for you, our pet class. And it'll have some things in it. For example, we want to talk to our pet. We want our pet to eat. We want to play with our pet. We ask the pet to perform a trick. But we have to set everything up. And here's our constructor. And when we first set it up, we want to say whether or not our pet is hungry, whether or not it is bored. And I'm going to ask, this is an old uh, school method, but I'm going to ask the motherboard um, for the system's time. Use that as a seed. Pass the seed to the random number generator. And so in my program, I can then ask R and D for a random number. And of course, to limit it, I can divide it by some other number, say 4. If I divide it by 4, any number divided by 4 will have a remainder 0, 1, 2, 3. You can't have a remainder greater than 3. Otherwise, we didn't actually divide by 4. All right, so we have some things we want no one to touch. And here it says um, we have a constant that we have four moods. And I have a string constant. It's static. That means there's only one copy of this. Even if I have a thousand rabbits or pets, I sort of gave it away to rabbit, right? Even if I have a thousand of these things, they all have the same or share the same type of moods. And they all have only three tricks they can perform. And this is non-static. Each rabbit has its own level of hunger. Each rabbit has its own level of boredom. And each rabbit, I can ask it its mood. And I, I put this in the private area just to demonstrate to you that we can have private methods. And how much time has passed. All right, so here we have our um, constructor. The first part is our formal parameter list. And you notice I have default values. What does that mean? It means I can just use the word pet or pet brace like this. And if there's uh, both parameters are missing, I will have this. H will be passed into hunger. And whatever B is, it will be passed into the variable board. and I do one step here, as we talked about earlier. Ask the motherboard for the time, which is a giant integer number. Feed it to the seed random number generator as a seed. That's what the S stands for, seed, to start the random number generator off. All right, so just identifying the parts once again. These are our methods. They're our public interface. That is, programmers from the outside world, when they want to create a pet, they will use these methods to control our pet. The private methods they're not supposed to touch, that's for us. But they're still called prototypes. Prototypes. Next. We don't want this to get crowded. We could write all our code in here, our implementation. 
but we rather look at this as a blueprint or our interface or our prototypes. Here is our implementation. We're actually going to tell you what PET looks like here, what the constructor looks like. And I, re I wrote it differently here instead of using the two dots. I spread it out over three lines of code. This is only done once, this whole thing. But it's just, here it is in one line. And that line would go right here. But here I'm writing it outside because, well, why not? Next, we have our private variable. Everything here is private. No one is allowed to touch it, touch any of them. And these things here, let's see, are private and static. That means there's only one copy. But I want to talk about what they look like. So the mood, our pet can be sad, happy, excited, or mad. And you can add other things to it. When you do, you have to change this constant. The number, n means number, whoops, number, number of moods. Not quite sure why my curse is doing that. Number of moods, number of tricks. This pet can jump, juggle, roll over, and you could add more, but then you have to change this constant, number of tricks. That's not terrible. Here, I'm going to, inside my um, object pet, I'm going to ask it its mood. So how do I ask the mood of the pet? First, I have this array of moods. Moods. Here, I'm going to pick a random number. Notice the percent sign. That means I'm asking the remainder. So whatever number n moods is, when I divide this number, which we have no idea what number that's going to be, this will give us a range. In this case, it'll be zero, it could be a one, it could be a two. I think I had four moods. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I don't know which mood this bunny or thing is going to be in. And then I return that string. Notice I return the moods and moods is a string. I want to pass some time away every time. I'm going to have a loop here somewhere. And every time I go through the loop, I'm going to keep track of time. And as time passes, I'm, I'm going to get more hungry and I'm going to get more bored. Just passing of time. This is how I need to know the idea that I need to feed the pet and I know that I need to play with the pet, otherwise the pet's going to get bored. So every once in a while, this thing has to be called somehow. Here's the pet talking to me. The pet will tell me, it'll go out, get its mood, which will be random sadly, and tell me its mood. Here, how much am I going to feed the pet? And if it's hungry, I'm going to subtract that amount of food from my hunger. So the more I feed it, the less hungry it gets. But if I feed it too much, I don't want this to become negative. So I say, stop it here. I'm going to say in my simple pet model or game, it'll never grow negative. I might get the pet depressed then if it goes negative. Now I want to play with the pet. The pet will always say, oh, this is fun. And every time you play with the pet, it will get less bored, depending on how you play with it. Right? Actually, yeah, hmm. too much play gets boring. That doesn't say it. Play should get boring. I don't think my program is actually reflecting that. because it seems to be getting less bored the more you play with it. So I might need better code so that if you play with it too much, it's, I'm bored with this. 
maybe we can go here when it gets to zero also include in that somehow it's getting bored now I can ask the pet to perform a trick find out its mood oh, I'm getting so bored if it's not mad at you or mad for whatever reason pick out a random trick tell me what that random trick is and the trick this trick is print out the trick but what if it's mad no trick for you so we need a control structure to f to talk to our pet well this would be a good control structure first I want to quit so I have something here to quit the control structure is this loop it says all right pick what's your choice go to the menu whatever that menu is we haven't written it yet if they chose zero oh zero what the heck does that mean oh it means quit probably should have used the word quit I'll right, skip that for now if they chose zero say goodbye because right up there it means quit if they had choice one I don't know what the, oh it means talk to the rabbit the rabbit you want to talk to your rabbit okay uh, choice number two rabbit plays so I guess this must be my pet choice three the rabbit eats now notice this is very ugly looking ugly syntax it really is saying rabbit arrow perform trick this is the easiest way to say it it's ha having some style in your syntax I only put this here to show it to you You should not use these two techniques you should use this technique all right let's get closer to building our rabbit now we have um, we have the lot of the mechanics here's our main program we announce it's our virtual pet world here I now have a rabbit it's a pet rabbit I get my choice go to my menu not quite sure what that is yet and here I cleaned up my code and I didn't need the arrow here because well this does not require an arrow it's just a reference like any structure so I'm going inside the rabbit structure and I'm getting my um, I'm calling my method and if there's an illegal choice I say oops but it should never happen our menu should guarantee that we never have anything illegal all right this is another version of it this is an educational class this says I don't have a rabbit I have a pointer to a rabbit so I have no rabbit a pointer but not a rabbit when I say new new will go out create an object call the constructor and now I will have a rabbit but I'm pointing to a rabbit and that's what this syntax means a syntax with style and the ugly syntax I'm pointing to a rabbit and when I'm done I return the memory to the system all right here's our menu we come into our menu our menu says these are our choices pick a number all right there's my number make sure your number if your number is less than zero or greater than the syntax uh, excuse me the ASCII number four go back and do it again so I'm guaranteeing the person is only allowed to enter one through four, zero through four excuse me so based on the mood it should perform tricks and you know it really shouldn't be um, um, so random maybe you can come up with an idea that it, its mood is based on hunger and boredom and based on the mood not a random number perform a trick you maybe could have a little randomness in there but not fully and um, that um, brings to me to the end of this and what you need to do is figuring out how to put this all together it's pretty much there to build our pet um, rabbit